This conference will now be recorded. All right, as always, everything that we're going to be talking about today is for educational purposes only, and nothing is intended as any type of investment advice. All right, so things got a little bit slow, um, you know, this morning, and things it took a little bit, you know, a little bit of time for things to really kind of fit in and and really give us some good, you know, high percentage game plans out there. But at the same time. Our, our the actual show of hand that we did have one of the better ones the STC at our our 14 where we had our bid prints definitely came into play big time so we can see we ended up having some ask prints at that 14 15 level which you know I just want you guys to keep in mind with these cheaper stocks we we did an well not an entire traders exchange on it but these cheaper stocks guys a lot of times at those highs you're going to see prints up there that doesn't mean that the stocks not going to be killed and the reason behind that is because they show a little bit of interest remember when they're going to be looking to get out they want people to be getting in that's how you you unload a large position um, and then we came to 14. I mean, I posted the prints in the high percentage trade uh, part because those when you have prints like this and I'll, I'll pull them over because I just want you to understand the pattern. Um, and it was kind of funny. I, I laughed when uh, when Doug said he's like, I think they think it's going to go down. But <laughs> I know that sounds like, you know, obvious, but it, it really wasn't because when you see prints, we talked about this the other day. These prints at this 1450 uh, 14 level. Remember, they don't want if, the, if you're going to build a position, you want to get the, the short position as high as you possibly can. So you would want to get in at 14 to show that building level because you need the build the uh, the 14 level for the added volume to come in at 14. But when you see prints immediately leak over like this, it gives us a very strong idea of what the time frame is going to be because you don't you don't jump into a position like this and leak over that much from 1397 all the way really to 1390 unless you're expecting the stock to come down big time and that's obviously I mean, there's not much to talk about. It was just an absolutely phenomenal trade. Now, we still have a ton of selling down there, but remember, it can't just go straight down because they won't actually be able to build from it. So overall, we you know we definitely still have some nice selling that came down at 13. We have some nice selling coming down towards those lows. Unfortunately, you know, push into 1250 did not hit. We ended up triggering back up and we're kind of riding our way back up towards that 14 level because in all reality, 14 didn't really have a pull up that we would have liked to see. But at the same time, when you have prints like that, you know what? You got to go with them so i'm still going to be keeping this on our list for the afternoon it does you know it's getting very consolidated but you know afternoon trading that's pretty much what we see for the most part but beautiful volume still in at thirty thousand shares so when volume does pick up we'll get back to about normal next thing looking at is uh NK, so NK that ended up being a wonderful trade. I know we were just talking about there are shares available now, which kind of <laughs> makes me a little bit skeptical of things because of the fact that when you can get shares on a stock like this, a lot of times you end up seeing that run back up towards that top side. Um, but overall, just such a beautiful trade. I mean, this thing, it, you know, we it started right here. We got beautiful prints at 750. We pulled back our 50 cents. We triggered back up. There was no looking back from it. Then we came to eight, got our prints. We pulled back a little bit. We ended up, you know, just just a fantastic run now the best trade in this by far because remember that long trades a little bit it's a little bit tough when you keep getting that buying coming in because what happens is that when they are ready to build it ends up being a huge bar that takes a lot of your profit so what you end up having to do is as the stock is going up you're constantly taking off part of the position because you're almost playing defense on a stock that moves like this you're talking about five dollars and the stock was at 550 this morning so when it's you know continuously put Pushing up like that, you honestly almost start to go into a defensive mode more than that offensive mode where you're going to be looking to add shares. You're really more looking to take them off. And that's why this was my favorite trade that came into it is because this view. I mean, we talk about this this pattern. I, I, I mean, until I, we could talk about it until I'm blue in the face, but just a beautiful push up to that 10 level trigger down. And it just I mean, you know, look at it. You know, you're talking about another absolutely fantastic trade from there. So coming in, I mean, you know, it's got some selling, you know, that eight was, you know, started off with a little bit of selling, you know, eight, 10, we have some mix there. So it's obviously, you know, based off of the fact that it's trading consolidated right now, our prints are looking pretty consolidated. So I would like to see something come in that's kind of definitive, but short term that shows, okay, this is exactly what's going to happen because from there, then we can kind of take the, the consolidated prints and really kind of understand them a little bit better. As of right now, like I said, it's really kind of just, 
that kind of just like floating around within that consolidation, but obviously still something that we have to pay close attention to. Next thing, BYND. So I just uh, said this before. Um, this morning, we had some nice shorter term prints that came in at 111 on that SI. We just got some buying at 10 and it was really holding that lows, those lows very well. So um, from here, I wouldn't be, you know, that really what I was just looking for was a quick trade, dollar trade from 110. We know it's going to play a little bit of games, but it's been playing games around there all day. So you know, a nice little move back up towards that 111. And then obviously, if we continue to see volume coming in and we get more buying, that shows us that we're going to be able to actually break past this congestion, break past those actual, those print lines, and not just come back up and end up right back down. Because obviously, they're selling below as well at that 108, 109, etc. So another one where, you know, I'm really just kind of looking for a shorter term opportunity. I'm not looking for a $5 trade out of it, although I will take a $5 trade, really just kind of looking for a shorter term um, you know, and then I'm going to say nickel and dimes because a dollar is not a nickel and dime. That's an absolutely huge trade. But, you know, in a stock like this that has such a beautiful range, it's really easy to, you know, when you get some nice shorter term prints in it to really just kind of ride out that dollar. And it's almost like, you know, I was thinking about this before. It's almost like, you know, we, we talk about building a brick or building a foundation by bricks. But it's almost like at the end of the day, our trades are really like, imagine a, a brick that's broken, that got smashed up, and you have to actually put the brick together first before you could even take one brick and start building that foundation. And that's really what it comes down to, in especially in afternoon trading. We're not looking to find that stock. I mean, don't get me wrong. Of course, we're always looking to find that stock that's going to make that huge $5 move, that $2.50 move, $10 move, whatever it is. But really what the afternoon is about, guys, is for us to find those pieces of bricks. And when you add 10, 20 cent trades together throughout an afternoon, well, guess what happens? Now it's $2. All right, so just kind of think about that, especially when there's stocks that, that you know, that aren't going to have a huge range like BYND, that are going to be like a normal, like an SIG. Like SIG, I love everything about it. I like the buy. I mean, it did, don't get me wrong, it did just start getting some selling that was coming down here and 31 did not have as nearly as much buying as I would have liked to. But even if it did, I can't expect that I'm going to go out there and make a dollar on SIG throughout, you know, in a, in a clean trade. And it's just gone, you know, gone to pretty much prove it since then. It's just, it's not that pretty. So I have to kind of take what I'm looking for and almost nickel and dime it. So instead of looking for, you know, like I said, a dollar, really, you know, focus on those 50 cents, you know, 50 cents, you know, even 25 cents because 25 cents does add up big time. Think about it, four trades for 25 cents, dollar right there. So just something to think about as we go into the afternoon. And then I have a few other things I'm looking at. Now, BE, um, I have on my side list, I'm just interested in what happened um, and vol volume would obviously need to come back in. Um, I had it on my list before this actually happened, before it just kind of died out and stopped trading. So I'm still going to keep an eye on it, but there's not really much there that, uh, that I could see as of now. And then XBO, on our side list as well, um, we just had some really great prints that came in at that 95. Um, but it's another one where the volume needs to pick up. But even something like this, 95, the way that the stock is and based off the range that we've had, right here is an easy spot to look for a 50 cent pullback. Now, would I do it with no volume? Hell no. I'm not even a question, but if volume picks up and you get something like this, we're just looking for, you know, like I said, to piece together a bunch of smaller trades. Obviously, like, I, you know, as I also explained, I'm always going to be looking for the $5 trade. I, you know, who the hell wouldn't be? But that's not something that we can really go into expecting in afternoons where it's just not a lot of stuff going on. OK, when you know, the, the best part about trading is when you do things the right way and you follow the rules, good things happen. So if you, you know, it's, it's those those 50 cent trades that you go looking for that end up turning into those two dollars and fifty and five dollar type trades. All right. So let's always keep that in mind, guys. Now, anything else out there that I missed? Anything else going on out there? Nope. All right. Beautiful. So let's get ready for our afternoon. I will talk to everyone in the chat and happy trading.